What's going on, everyone? This is Dr. Gunnell here, and we are back with the Three Minutes on the Clock podcast, season two, episode number 15. Today, we have another NFL mock, but it's a little bit different than all the other ones I've done because the first 10 mock drafts I have done are predicting the pick. I have to guess the moves that will happen. I have to guess which team picks which player. But today's mock draft is going to be quite different. In this scenario, I become the GM of all 32 teams and make the pick that I think should happen, not the pick that I think will happen. So let's say hypothetically that, I don't know, the Bucks GM really likes Andrew Thomas, just as an example, I don't know. And if Andrew Thomas is on the board, that doesn't mean I'm going to pick that player just because the GM likes them. If there's a certain style of player that GMs like, like Mike Mayock liking tough cornerbacks who are good tacklers, uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to pick a tough corner. Maybe if CJ Henderson's on the board, then he is a guy I would consider, whereas I don't think Mayock would in real life. So a lot of these picks probably would never happen value-wise as well, because I am basing this also off of my personal board, not off of the consensus board. So you'll see some weird value picks, guys who maybe should be first rounders, not going to the first round. An example being like Josh Jones, the offensive tackle out of Houston. I'm not a huge Josh Jones guy. I don't think he should go in round one. And that's why he's going to go lower than he will actually in real life. And there are going to be players who aren't supposed to go in the first round that do end up being high draft picks. A guy like Noah Igbenogany, he's going to go way higher than most people have him going or expect because I'm higher on him than others. So a lot of these picks will never happen. And I understand people are not going to like a lot of these picks, but this is just my opinion, what I would do if I was these teams. So uh, without further ado, let's get right on into it. With the first pick, the Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback out of LSU. This is a very easy choice. I didn't really have to think about it too hard. Not only will this pick happen, but it should happen, and it's for right pick. The Bengals need a new identity. They need a new franchise quarterback, and Joe Burrow, without much of a doubt, is the best one in this class. He doesn't have really any strong weaknesses. I think he's NFL ready. I don't think there's going to be a competition for the starting job, whether Andy Dalton is on this roster or not. I think Joe Burrow will be the week one starter for the Bengals. And I think he is ready to lead them into a new era. Obviously, there's this false narrative that the Bengals are a bad organization and Joe Burrow's career will be wasted. That's just blasphemous. It's not true. There are, I could probably name 10 teams off the top of my head who are a worse organization than the Cincinnati Bengals. I understand their ownership sucks, but outside of that, I mean, they have a winning culture. They have a winning record in the 2010s. And obviously, they didn't win any playoff games, but... That's because of certain instances in coaching. That's because of guys like Marvin Lewis, who couldn't coach in big games. Well, he's gone. Guys like Pac-Man Jones and Vontez Perfect ruining it with late game penalties. They're gone. So the Bengals, I think, are not this bad organization that you don't want to go to. And I think it's just an extremely ridiculous false narrative. And I think it's just a lazy take. Pick two, Redskins going to select Chase Young, edge rusher, Ohio State. Another pick I didn't really have to think about too much. Now, obviously, this pick, this uh, mock draft does not involve trades. If it did, I would consider a trade down here for Washington. I understand Chase Young is the best player in this class, but when you, you can get a premium haul for a team like the Dolphins or the Chargers, who would probably who, who would probably consider moving up in real life. It is something to consider. But in this mock, I don't think anyone should give up the house for Chase Young. And for Washington, there isn't a huge incentive to trade down. So Chase Young is going to be the easy pick, best player in this class. Washington has some talent going after the quarterback, and their front line is probably the strength of their team. I mean, your interior defensive line, you got Jonathan Allen, Matt Ioannidis, Deron Payne, and then edge rushers who have their hands out of the dirt. Guys like Montez Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan. Those are five quality football players, four of whom are quite young, with Kerrigan being the exception. So I think Chase Young is the easy pick. Redskins should not question it. Pick three. Uh, I am a Lions fan. I didn't have to think too hard about this pick. There are a few options we could go. I'm hoping we trade back, but since there's no trades, we have to stick it out at three. The two players I would be happy with here are Isaiah Simmons or Jeff Okuda. However, if I'm the GM, I'm picking Isaiah Simmons. This is a transcendent talent who can change a defense. I'm worried Matt Patricia won't utilize him correctly, but if I'm worried that the team's not playing well earlier, early into the season, as the coach, I can do, or as the GM, I can do whatever I want with Matt Patricia's position. So 
I understand maybe the fit might be a little bit awkward. Isaiah Simmons isn't necessarily a Matt Patricia type linebacker, but he's too talented to pass up. And if you can't find a role for him on your defense, then you don't deserve to have a head coaching job in the NFL. So while Jeff Akuta is a great player, I think we're stronger at corner than people think. Justin Coleman, solid in the slot. Desmond Trufant's a good player. Manny Oruarie really being slept on. I think he can be a quality starter in this league. And Isaiah Simmons, he can play your in-the-box safety role. Have a Derwin James-esque role on the defense. So I think this would be the correct pick for the Lions. If we move down to five or six and pick him in real life, I'd be absolutely thrilled. I think that's our best realistic scenario for how the draft could play out. But Isaiah Simmons is the number two player in this class for me. And um, as a Lions fan, if we don't get Chase Young, then Isaiah Simmons has to, or at least should be the pick. At four, the Giants, there were a few options they could go with. If Isaiah Simmons was here, he would have been the pick. But since he's not here, that's out of the question. I thought about Jeff Akuda here. I really did. But the Giants have invested a lot at corner. James Bradbury was paid a lot of money. DeAndre Baker was a first-round pick last year. Got guys like uh, Julian Love, who's probably going to transition to safety. But there are some other young players there. Guys like uh, Sam Beal and uh, a few other guys. Grant Haley as well. I highly considered Akuda, though. I think he's going to be better day one than any of those players I just named. I guess most notably James Bradbury. I think Okuda would be better than him. But at the same time, you have some glaring holes on the offensive line. And you want to get blockers for Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. You want to have Daniel Jones progress as much as possible in year two. So because of that, I have him going offensive line. And to be specific, the tackle from Alabama, Jedrick Wills. Uh, it's been a tight race for my number one offensive lineman in this class. You could really pick any of the big four of these tackles. I'm high on all four of them. So... I think Willis makes the most sense for the Giants. That doesn't mean he'll be my uh, offensive tackle number one, but I think having the best pass blocker in the draft, put him at right tackle, plug and play starter, boom. Jedrick Wills, I think, is the correct pick here at four. At five, this is where the drama starts, five and six. The Dolphins and Chargers are two teams who need quarterbacks bad. In every single mock draft I have done, uh, one of these teams gets Tua Tagovailoa, and the other one gets Justin Herbert. This scenario, I don't have either of them picking Tua or Herbert right here. I'm not high on either Tua or Herbert. I think they're borderline first to second round prospects. I, I think they're the next two best quarter, quarterbacks in this draft behind Joe Burrow, but I think it's too high to pick them. So I would rather invest on the offensive line and get a value, better value pick for the quarterback spot later even if that player might not be as good. Mainly looking at the Chargers, the Dolphins have two other first-round picks, so they still have an opportunity, spoiler alert, to get a guy like Tua Tungabailoa or Justin Herbert, whereas the Chargers, it was a little bit harder to pass up on one of these guys because I knew none of them were going to be available with the Chargers' second-round pick, so I had to make a tough decision there, and I decided to go with the value over the position of need of quarterback. Both of these teams need offensive line. Dolphins are going to pick up Tristan Wirfs, versatile tackle who can play at guard and then the chargers are picking up andrew thomas the most polished offensive lineman in this draft put him at left tackle day one he'll be great so neither of these are quarterbacks i don't think dolphins or chargers fans are going to love this especially chargers fans dolphin fans are probably going to like this later but i don't think chargers fans are going to be happy with this pick i understand that but i think it's too high for tua or herbert pick seven jeff akuda cornerback ohio state to the carolina panthers there are not a lot of phenomenal value picks in this draft because it is off of my board where every pick is good value, but not great value. There aren't a lot of steals. Well, Jeff Okuda is one of those exceptions. He is a steal. Number three player in this class. I considered him at pick three. I considered him at four. I considered him at five. Not, not really at six, but value-wise, I kind of considered it. So the Panthers are getting an absolute steal here. Lockdown corner, maybe the best uh, corner I've scouted since I've really got into the NFL draft, either him or Jalen Ramsey. And Okuda is a guy who can replace James Bradbury. He'll be an upgrade to James Bradbury. And this would be an excellent selection. Home run from Panthers. Then pick eight. Cardinals need offensive line quite bad. Of the big four tackles, there's only one left, and that is Makai Becton. So the pick here is pretty easy. Going to go with Becton out of Louisville. I think he's the highest ceiling for any offensive lineman in this draft class, regardless of position, interior, or tackle. Becton is a massive man. He moves so well. 
such a fluid football player. I think he's a little bit more raw and has some more technique to work on compared to these other tackles and Wills, Wirfs, and Thomas. But Makai Becton has a chance to be an elite tackle in this game. So props to the Cardinals for making a good pick here at eight. Here at pick nine, there are a number of solid options for Jacksonville, but nothing that really pops out to me. I looked at interior defensive line, guys like Derek Brown, Javon Kinlaw could have gone with a corner. I think it's a little bit too high for CJ Henderson or Christian Fulton. Uh, so I would trade down here, but once again, since there's no trades, I had to go with the player who I think would make the most sense right here for Jacksonville, and that's Derek Brown, the interior defense alignment out of Auburn. Phenomenal run stuffer. He's a guy who's going to shed blocks. He's going to create double teams and give more opportunities for some of these other players like Josh Allen and Taven Bryant, who are trying to get to the quarterback. Obviously, uh, the Jaguars are in full rebuild mode. I think they're going to full on tank next year. Jalen Ramsey wanted out. Yannick Ngakwe really wants out. Uh, Leonard Fournette wants out. Or he doesn't want out. I wouldn't be surprised if he wants out. And it sounds like he will be getting traded, which I do think is a good move for the Jaguars. Leonard Fournette, not a guy who I would really want on my football team. Uh, but Derek Brown, I think, makes the most sense here. I think Javon Kinlaw is the other pick I seriously considered. Uh, but we're going to go with Brown just because I think he has a lower floor. And for a team like the Jaguars, you want to establish physicality at the line of scrimmage. Get guys who you know can be stalwarts for a while. And get guys who you know are going to be guaranteed starters for the long haul. Javon Kinlaw has a higher ceiling, but a lower floor. He has some medical question marks as well. While Kinlaw has a chance to be the better player, he's the better pass rusher. I think Derek Brown makes more sense for where the Jaguars are at. One of the highest floor players in this draft and a safe pick here at nine for the Jags. Pick 10 is where things kind of get awkward because we have the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns have to go offensive line in the first round, right? Well, the only offensive linemen who I think make sense here are those big four tackles. Jedrick Wills, Tristan Wirfs, Andrew Thomas, and Makai Becton. Uh, well, they're all gone. So, yeah. There are no good value picks here for offensive line. If you look at the offensive tackle position, there's only one who I have as a clear second round grade, and that's Isaiah Wilson. You're not picking Isaiah Wilson here at 10. I think any first round pick on Isaiah Wilson is a little bit too high. The, the only other offensive lineman I have a first round grade on is the center out of Michigan, Cesar Ruiz. I think 10 is a little bit too high. If you look at their other needs, they could use safety. I think it's too high for Xavier McKinney or anyone else there. They could use linebacker, Patrick Queen, Kenneth Murray. I suppose neither of them are total reaches, but I think it's a little bit too high still here at 10. So I'm going through their depth chart and I notice that wide receiver is kind of interesting because you got Odell Beckham, you got Jarvis Landry, but after that, there's nothing. And there are a lot of teams in this 11 to 15 range, the Jets, Raiders, Niners, and Broncos, who are all looking at wide receiver. However, what about the Cleveland Browns? If all of these tackles are gone, there's a hole that open that is opened at receiver. Odell Beckham, you got on the outside. Jarvis Landry, you got in the slot. So why not add another weapon? And value-wise, this is a great pick. Jerry Judy out of Alabama. My number one receiver in the class. They really can't go anyone else, anywhere else according to their needs. Can't go O-line. Can't go linebacker. Can't go safety. So I think wide receiver makes the most sense here. And Jerry Judy is a very polished guy. Best route runner to come out in a long time. I don't think he has the ceiling that CeeDee Lamb or Jerry, or not, CeeDee Lamb or Henry Ruggs has, sorry. But I think Jerry Judy has a chance to be really be something special early on in his career. And value-wise, this is great for the Browns. New York Jets at 11, another team who should pick offense to tackle here. But since there are none of value, got to go to the next best option. And that's wide receiver for me. Uh, the best one on the board is CeeDee Lamb out of jo out of Oklahoma. I almost said Georgia. <laughs> anyway, CeeDee Lamb, I don't think he's as good as Jerry Judy. Not quite as good of hands. Not quite the route runner. But CeeDee Lamb is a guy who plays big. Phenomenal after the catch. He's excellent with the ball in his hands. And he's a guy who can create big plays. So I think for the Jets, if you can't go tackle, got to pick up a number one receiver for Sam Darnold. And I think that can be CeeDee Lamb. Here at pick 12, the Raiders receiving room might be the worst in the NFL, if not one of the worst, uh, but now it's going to get a little bit better. Henry Ruggs, the speedster out of Alabama, he's, I mean, I say he's a speedster, but he does a lot more. He's an underrated route runner, underrated hands. Obviously, he's very athletic, very explosive after the catch, 
And I think Henry Ruggs, day one, could be the best receiver on this Raiders roster. So, really getting a playmaker. We've seen what guys like Tyree Kill have done for the Chiefs offense. Well, Raiders, now you get your own Tyree Kill. So now we get to the Niners at 13. There are two routes they should go here. Wide receiver or interior defensive line. I guess you could consider cornerback as well. With the big three wide receivers gone, that knocks out that position. I think it's too high for a guy like Justin Jefferson. You could look at corner. CJ Henderson, Christian Fulton, Noah Igbenogany all work. Uh, but I think Javon Kinlaw is a better value pick than any of those guys. And he fits in need as well. So the pick here is going to be Javon Kinlaw. Uh, Niners fans hate this pick. Why? Beats me. You guys need another interior defensive lineman. I know you want to go out and get this the sexy skill positions with this pick, but all three of these receivers are gone. You got to address a need and get really good value. The Niners have a great defensive line. D Ford, Nick Bosa coming off the edge. Eric Armstead, he's more of an edge guy to begin with who's playing inside. So you don't have any traditional interior defensive linemen anymore who at least are good. Solomon Thomas is not good. DJ Jones is not good. Please don't kid yourselves. You guys need a guy who can be the DeForest Buckner replacement, and Javon Kinlaw is perfect. He reminds me a lot of DeForest Buckner, a guy who not only can stop a run, but is a really good pass rusher uh, in the middle of this defensive line. So Niners fans are probably questioning this. Why would we trade DeForest Buckner for a young younger and worse version of DeForest Buckner. Well, Javon Kinlaw here is going to be way cheaper. Niners fans, you got to realize you can't pay everybody. And you got to save some money for other spots. So why not still get cheaper here, but still have production coming off the defensive line? So I love this pick for the 49ers. I know their fans won't, but that's them. I don't, I don't get it. Here at 14, another awkward spot here is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They need O-line. All the tackles are gone. I guess this isn't horrible value now for Cesar Ruiz, but I decided to go with Caleb on chase on instead, the edge rusher out of LSU. The Bucs don't have a drastic hole at edge rusher, but I think they could use another one, especially with Shaq Barrett being on the franchise tag. He was outstanding last year, but he could be a one-year wonder. So adding more guys going after the quarterback, I think makes a ton of sense. Chase on is, is an athletic guy. He's not going to have his hand in the dirt. He's not a phenomenal run stopper. But as a athletic pass rusher with bend and explosiveness off the edge, I think this is a really good pick for the Buccaneers. Obviously, you want a tackle, but if you can't get one, this is a good substitute. Here at 15, I know Denver fans want a wide receiver. I think it's a little bit too high for Justin Jefferson. And con considering the depth at wide receiver in this draft class, there's going to be plenty who are good and available in the second round. So why not address another need? And that's going to be CJ Henderson, cornerback out of Florida. Henderson might be the best pure cover corner in this draft class. Excellent ball skills as well, but he's not good at tackling. He made business decisions with effort and tackling last season. Part of that could be him just trying to stay healthy for the NFL draft, which is a possibility, but he's always had that weakness to begin with. And I think the effort and the toughness is a little bit questionable, but as a pure cover guy, this is great value at 15. Pick 16, a guy I like, Christian Fulton out of LSU. Good cover skills, not quite as elite as a guy like C.J. Henderson. Good ball skills as well. And we really got to see Christian Fulton, you know, make a lot of plays last year because quarterbacks generally threw to his side more because on the other side, you had Derek Stanley. Stanley was the best quarter in college football last year. And if he were in this draft, he would be long gone. Uh, so we got to see Christian Fulton get the ball thrown his way more, and he proved himself that he is a very good corner last year, even if he's not the best on his roster. Uh, he's still going to be very good. He might be the best on this Falcons roster, to be honest, because they, they, they are really struggling here at corner. So Christian Fulton's a guy who I think will make an immediate impact, and this would be a good pick for Atlanta. Here at pick 17, the Cowboys are going to pick up Noah Igbenogany, the cornerback out of Auburn. One of my favorite players in this draft, personally. You know, he's raw, but I think this makes sense for the Cowboys because they don't need corner necessarily this season. Chidobe Awuzie, Jordan Lewis, and Anthony Brown are three quality starters. But the Cowboys have invested a lot of money already into a lot of guys on their roster, and pretty much their whole secondary is gone after next year. Lewis is a free agent. Awuzie is a free agent. I think Brown's a free agent. Xavier Woods will be a free agent. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix will be a free agent. That's fair. Starting secondary, all gone. And they're not going to be able to pay most of them because Dak's going to have a big contract. Zeke will. Amari will. Tyron Smith will. Zach Martin will. Demarcus Lawrence will. Uh, Jalen Smith will. So 
Dallas can't pay everybody. So you got to uh, look at the cornerback position, try to get younger there, try to get cheaper there. And a guy like Noah Igbenogany, who doesn't have to play right away, can learn so- behind some of these starters and then come in, in 2021 and be one of the better cornerbacks on this team, I think makes a ton of sense. He, uh, he needs to work on a lot of things. He's still raw. He's still new to the position. He was recruited out of high school, I believe, as a wide receiver, transitioned over to corner, and he has good cover skills, needs to work on his footwork, needs to better understand plays and routes better. Ball skills could improve. Uh, but, you know, since he was a wide receiver, he does have a little bit of natural ball skills. So I think there's a lot of potential here, a lot to like with Noah Igbenogany, and this will be a great pick for Dallas. Here at 18, Tua Tungabailoa goes off a board to the Dolphins. And pretty much this whole pre-draft process, Justin Herbert has been my QB2. Uh, and it's really close between the two, in my opinion. Obviously, Tua is the better player, but with the durability concerns, that's why uh, Tua's falling here. And I do have him going before Justin Herbert because I think Tua Tungabailoa makes more sense for the Miami Dolphins. I mean, he's a guy who... Uh, We've, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks be rushed into starting jobs, and I think Jordan Love and Justin Herbert are going to be starting uh, quite early. In this mock scenario, Jordan Love won't start at all this year, but if they go to teams like the Raiders or the Colts or teams who could have quarterbacks struggle, I think they could be rushed into starting a little bit early. That's my wor- that's one of my worries with both Love and Herbert, but with Tua, he's just going to have a medical red shirt. He's not even going to play. Just let him develop behind Fitzpatrick and Rosen and have him ready for 2021 as the starter. And if he can be fully healthy, then he is more than worth this pick. And he, if he was fully healthy, he would have been gone at five or six. So I think this is a very solid selection for the Dolphins. I don't think they should pick Tua Tagovailoa at five. I don't think they should trade up for Tua Tagovailoa, obviously. But here at 18, I think it's fair value for him. Pick 19, Raiders need a corner. Going to get a physical guy who I really like in Jeff Gladney out of TCU. He's one of the older prospects. He's going to be 23 when he makes his first NFL snap, which I don't love. But I think age comes with experience and awareness. And I think he's going to be really good right off the bat. He's a guy I've been high on this whole pre-draft process. Get a starter alongside Trayvon Mullen. And that could, they, the two of them can be a very solid cornerback duo for Las Vegas. I know I've probably already called them Oakland like five times today. Pick 20, Jacksonville. We were in an interesting predicament here because there are a number of spots I could go. Do I want to reach down the board for a position of need like corner, like Jalen Johnson? Or do I want to look at some other players? I had Justin Jefferson pegged in here for a minute. The wide receiver out of LSU could have gone safety, could have gone edge. Number of different paths, but the Jaguars just suck at corner. I feel like they just have to pick one here in round one. And the best one on the board for me is Jalen Johnson out of Utah. The gap between uh, these corners from here until the middle of the second round is very close. Guys like Jalen Johnson, Trayvon Diggs, A.J. Terrell, Bryce Hall, they're all neck and neck together, and they're not going to go near each other in this draft. So I think the Jaguars could have gone with any of them, but my top ranked of that group is going to be Jalen Johnson. Super productive at Utah, great tackler, great leader. This is a guy who you want to have on your defense, sort of like Derrick Brown, I think a more safer pick, a guy who was very productive in college, doesn't have a crazy ceiling, but is going to be willing to play in Jacksonville and not want out right away on like Yannick Ngakwe and Jalen Ramsey and Leonard Fournette. I think the Jaguars want to find leadership, team players, and productive players with these two first-round picks. So nothing sexy from Jacksonville, but two guys, they can really build the foundation of their defense around. Pick 21, the Eagles have to go receiver. There are a few that I could consider here, but the best value here at 21 is Justin Jefferson out of LSU. Super productive season. A lot of people had him running like a four mid 4-5. Four, he ran a 4-4-2. Four, four, He's sneaky fast. He's a guy who's probably going to play in the slot, can also play on the outside too. And the, the Eagles have some talent at receiver. Don't get me wrong. Alshon Jeffrey, when healthy, is a good player. Deshaun Jackson, when healthy, is a good player. J.J. Ortega whiteside has some upside to be a good player. Greg Ward, developmental guy who played pretty well down the stretch last year. So you have a common theme. Guys who could develop and be good. Guys who can stay healthy and be good. But J.J. Ortega whiteside didn't develop last year. Deshaun Jackson played like two games. Alshon Jeffrey, you can't trust him to be healthy either. So this team needs a true number one receiver badly as well. So for me, that's Justin Jefferson. 
As I said, there are a few routes they could go with this position, but he is my number one receiver on the board. Pick 22, the Vikings. They need receiver as well. I'm going to go with one of my favorite players in this draft class, Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State. Plays big. He's a guy who's good after the catch. I think he's a little bit raw. Needs to work on his route running. Uh, but he showed a lot of promise at Arizona State. Played well in the Senior Bowl. Tested pretty well at the Combine. And I think this is a very nice pick for the Vikings, who need a Stephon Diggs replacement. Pick 23, New England Patriots. Going to get Justin Herbert, quarterback out of Oregon. Herbert has a lot of physical tools, and he has the potential to be a star in this league. He's a tall glass of water. He has an arm. He is mobile, and he can just rip it down the field. Excellent deep ball. He has the arm strength. He has the accuracy to go deep. So there's a lot to like about Herbert, but there's also a lot not to like. He's extremely inconsistent. He doesn't have the greatest awareness in the pocket. He needs to make better decisions. Not great with short and medium accuracy. And if there's one person in this league who I can trust to develop Justin Herbert, that's Bill Belichick. So I think this is a great fit. Start a guy like Jared Stedham year one. Heck, even sign a player like Cam Newton for a year or even Jameis Winston. But have Justin Herbert under the wings, ready for year two. And I think this will be an excellent pick for the Patriots. Pick 24, Jordan Love, quarterback, Utah State gun of the New Orleans Saints. I think this is it for Drew Brees. One final rodeo, so you could look to get some extra pieces to get ammo for your Super Bowl run. But I think the Saints have enough uh, to make a Super Bowl run as it is. Maybe they can find a few gems late, but I think it's probably smarter to also think about your future at the same time. So getting a guy like Jordan Love, who's not ready to start, he's even more raw than Justin Herbert. So have him develop, develop and learn from Drew Brees, one of the all-time greats. Have him start next year or whenever Brees retires. I think makes more sense than getting a guy like Patrick Queen or Kenneth Murray or one of the wide receivers to help the team now. But in a year when they have no quarterback and things get ugly, you don't want that. So I think Jordan Love makes the most sense here for the future. And I think this would be a good pick for the Saints. Obviously, I made all of these picks, so I like every single one of them. But there are some picks I love. And this next pick right here for the Vikings might be my favorite pick in this entire video. Antoine Winfield Jr., the safety out of Minnesota, going to the Minnesota Vikings. This pick just makes so much sense to me. They have the best safety tandem in football. So why pick a guy like Antoine Winfield, who is a safety? Well, let me tell you this. First off. The two safeties are Anthony Harris and Harrison Smith, two guys who are great. Do you think either of them are going to be starting on this team in five years? The answer is no. Harrison Smith is going to start declining. He's on the wrong side of 30. Anthony Harris had one really good season last year, and he was great, but it could be a fluke season. He's on the franchise tag. The Vikings could look to trade him. So I don't see either of them starting on this team in five years. So that's where Antoine Winfield can go for the future. I think there's a good chance that a guy like Anthony Harris is not on this roster this time next season. And if a team's willing to offer a second or third round pick for him, if I was a Vikings GM, I would highly, highly consider that. And not to mention, Winfield's a guy who will make an impact day one. You can have him deep as a safety, as a number, uh, as a third safety, but also as a slot corner, a guy who can be versatile, a guy who can do a lot of different things with on this defense. He tested quite well at the combine much better than I was expecting I was worried about his launch speed he ran like a 4.45 or something so launch speed is no longer a worry that was my big weakness for him heading into the combine and he proved me wrong and he's a guy who's going to play slack corner that's probably where he'll be most of season uh number one as a rookie but he can he flies over the field he makes a ton of plays and I mean Obviously, Antoine Winfield Sr. was a longtime corner for the Minnesota Vikings as well. So the family ties here also make this pick a whole lot of fun. And I, I just think it makes so much sense. Not a not a pairing that uh, people really talk about, but this team and player pairing, I just love it. I absolutely love it. Pick 26, Cesar Ruiz, center, can also play guard out of Michigan. Uh, you can play, he can play anywhere on the interior offensive line. This is great value for the mm -hmm. Miami Dolphins. I considered him a lot earlier. I considered him at like 14 to the Bucks. I kind of looked at him for, at 10 for the Browns, but value-wise, I didn't really like that. But this is a steal. You get your off, you get your tackle slash guard of the future in Tristan Wirfs, who's versatile, can play a bunch of different positions. Why not get another versatile lineman in Cesar Ruiz to go along with your franchise quarterback until a tongue of Iloa? This is a great first round for the Dolphins, and I, I'm worried for Dolphin fans that they're going to mess up this first round. Like, if they get, like, Tua at, I don't know, five, 
We'll say they don't trade up. Josh Jones at 18. Xavier McKinney at 26. Dolphin fans are going to love it. I'm not. I mean, the McKinney pick wouldn't be bad, but two at five, no. Josh Jones at 18, no. That's what I, I see the Dolphins doing something like that. So I, I just have a feeling that the Dolphins are going to mess it up in my, according to my evaluations, but this draft for them would be outstanding. 27, Seahawks need an edge rusher badly. Uh, they got like nobody going after for quarterback. So I have them getting a high floor guy who's going to be great year one. And that's Curtis Weaver out of Boise State. This is a guy who's not going to be a superstar. Doesn't have a lot of uh, bend and explosiveness coming off the edge, but he does everything else right. He's a productive athlete. He was very productive in college. He's a guy who I can I think is going to be like a 7-9 to nine sack guy per year in his prime. If he gets 7-8-9 sacks a season for the Seahawks team for a while, but I think this pick is his success. I don't think he's ever going to be like a 12 or 13 sack guy, but I think his high floor and his production... And if he can just improve on some of those things, I think he could be really good. Pick 28, excellent value. The off-ball linebackers, Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray, they have fallen here uh, because of teams going with other needs. I considered them a lot earlier. I looked at both of them at 10. I looked at them at 24. Uh, if the Jaguars didn't sign Joe Scobert, I think Patrick Queen probably would have been the pick at 20. If the Raiders didn't go out and sign guys like Nick Witowski and Corey Littleton, Patrick Queen would have probably gone at 19. And Kenneth Murray would have gone a lot earlier as well. So because of teams that really needed linebackers addressing them, uh, they fall here. And the Ravens are going to swoop up Patrick Queen, explosive, dynamic player. He doesn't have a lot of... Uh, size compared to other linebackers, but he has solid length, good sideline to sideline linebacker, and I think this is a great pick for Baltimore. This is a team who's always built their foundation around defense, and to be specific, having a dominant middle linebacker, so I think adding a guy with Patrick Queen would be a great pick. Here at 29, A.J. Epinesa, edge rusher out of Iowa. Titans fans, meet your Jarrell Casey replacement. Epinesa is a guy who can play edge. He, you can have him as more of an interior defensive lineman. He's a guy who's good against for run. He's a very solid pass rusher, had 13 sacks as a sophomore. I only had like five last year, but that's because of double teams. He's not a great athlete, but for a guy who is going to have his hand in the dirt and not like necessarily come off with speed off the edge, but more so some of those grindier plays facing up against guards and centers, I don't think you need to have necessarily insane athleticism. So I think the fit here and the value will be quite good at 29 for AJ Epinesa and the Titans. Pick 30, Kenneth Murray. I mentioned him falling. Great value here for the Green Bay Packers. They need linebacker. Blake Martinez is gone. Packer fans, congratulations. As a Lions fan, I'm very sad about that. And I'd also be sad about this because the value here is outstanding with Kenneth Murray. This is a leader for your defense. Very productive at uh, Oklahoma. Super high character player. And I think he's going to be really, really good at the next level. So this is a very good, good selection for the Packers. Pick 31, another one of my favorite picks in this draft. Niners going to get Jalen Reger, wide receiver out of TCU. I, I think this is great value for Reger. I know some will disagree. Reger is a love or hate prospect. Some people really don't think he's all that good. Third or fourth round grade. Others have him as a first round guy, and that includes myself. Uh, he needs to work on his route running. Uh, he is a little bit raw, but to be fair, he wasn't able to make all the plays last year because his quarterback sucked. He, he, you need to have somebody good throwing you the ball to make plays. So now you get to play in the NFL with a professional quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, who is a very solid player. And we saw what Tyreek Hill did to San Francisco in the Super Bowl. If Tyreek Hill didn't make that one catch, the Niners probably win the game. So why not add a speed threat in Reger? He can have stretch the field and be your Marquis Goodwin replacement slash upgrade. Love this pick for the Niners. Then at 32, Chiefs have a gaping hole at corner. Uh, Kendall Fuller is gone, so we're going to have them pick up Trayvon Diggs. Excellent zone corner. Some people have him ranked a lot higher. He was a little bit inconsistent last season, but I do think him going to the Chiefs here at 32 is pretty solid value. Bengals at 33. I've had this pick in a lot of mocks because I think it makes total sense. Zach Bond, the edge slash linebacker out of Wisconsin. He can play both positions, and the reason why I like this is because the Bengals need both. So essentially, you're killing one bird here with two stones. I know the saying is two birds with one stone, but in this scenario, you're using one pick 
or one bird on Zach Bond, and you're going to try him out at two positions. He can play either one, I think, at the next level. He can go after the quarterback. He can drop any coverage. He can stop the run. So he can do a lot of different things, and the Bengals need all of that. So I like this pick a lot for them. Pick 34, Colts need receivers. I think this is very solid value for Denzel Mims out of Baylor. He is my wide receiver seven, but wide receivers four through seven. Jefferson, Ayuk, Rager, and Mims are all very close together on my board. So I think this is pretty solid value, very solid value here at 34 for Indy. Pick 35, the Lions. This was a very tough choice for me. Obviously, I am a Lions fan, and I wanted this pick to be the best possible choice. And there wasn't that clear guy for me. I considered just saying, screw need, let's go for value. Even though I, we clearly don't need safety, let's go ahead and get a guy like Xavier McKinney. I thought about that. I think Marlon Davidson could have made sense. We could have looked at wide receiver. KJ Hamler, I think, would be a lot of fun. I considered running back, too. Imagine DeAndre Swift on this offense, but I decided not to do any of those. We're going with Josh Uchi, edge out of Michigan. He can also play linebacker as well. I think he's a great fit as a hybrid in Matt Patricia's defense. So get this. We got our defensive linemen, Flowers, Hand, Nick Williams, and Danny Shelton. Got Josh Uche as an edge rusher mainly. He can also uh, drop into coverage occasionally, but he'll be a main edge rusher. Then on the other side, we move Jared Davis to edge rusher. He doesn't have his hand in the dirt like Josh Uche going after a quarterback. Jared Davis is an inside linebacker. He sucks in coverage, but he's a good pass rusher. I've been preaching for months. Move him to edge rusher. He's going to get traded this offseason to a team like New England. They're going to move him to edge rusher, and he's going to become a really good player. I can just see it. Then as your linebackers, Jelani Tavai and Jamie Collins, along with Isaiah Simmons is that hybrid safety inbox linebacker. So that's the Lions front seven. I really like that a lot. So maybe Uche isn't the best value and drafting for value is better than need, but this pick is need and fit. And I think Josh Uche is a great fit for this defense. Giants at 36. I said, screw it. Let's just go value Xavier McKinney. They could use another safety. Julian Love is not proven at the position. Jabril Peppers is more of a hybrid player to begin with. And McKinney is the best pure safety in this year's draft class. And I think this is very solid value for the Giants. Pick 37, Chargers. They need a quarterback. I would pick QB here, but value. It's too high for Jalen Hurts. Too high for Jacob Eason. Too high for Jake Fromm. So I've been going with KJ Hamler out of Penn State. Had a dynamic playmaker to this offense, a guy who can do so many different things. You can have him in the slot. You can have him in the backfield. You can have him on end arounds. And I think he can have so many different roles as a speed and athletic threat on this Chargers offense. And I think this will be a really fun pick. 38, Panthers going to pick up Marlon Davidson, interior defense alignment out of Auburn. Really thought about him for Detroit. Uh, but I do have him here uh, going to Carolina. I think Davidson will get picked higher but a lot of people expect. I think he. I think there's a very good chance he ends up being a first-round pick, and I don't think that's bad value at all. And this is really good value for the Panthers, a guy who can get after the quarterback and stop the run. He did have the benefit of playing with Derek Brown, who took all the double teams, which helps Marlon Davidson out. But I still think he is a quite a, a good player, and I think he can fit this Panthers defense quite well. Pick 39, first running back off the board. Talent-wise, this is great value. But I don't believe in drafting running backs in the first round unless your name is Saquon Barkley. So the pick here is going to be DeAndre Swift out of Georgia. I think he's a, the best pure runner in this class. I think J.K. Dobbins is more well-rounded all around. But I think DeAndre Swift is the best pure running back. Super elusive, super agile. I think he has the chance to be a top 10 to 15 receiver as soon as he puts on the pads and helmet for this Dolphins team. They have a much better offensive line with... Uh, Tristan Wirth, Cesar Ruiz, and spoiler alert, I have another offensive lineman later in this video going to the Dolphins, so uh, they can get blockers for Swift. He'll be great. Then pick 40, Texans. It's been a rough offseason for them, to say the least. Got to get some guys in the middle of that defense, though. Got to get your DJ re reader replacement, so I'm going with a very productive player out of TCU, Ross Blacklock. Uh, he has an Achilles injury question mark, but he played well last year, fully healthy. He played well in 2017, so I think this would be a really good selection here for the Houston Texans. Solid value, not a steal, but I think he's the best interior defensive lineman on the board. I can tell you right now, Browns fans and Jets fans probably don't love their picks, but we're going to explain why. I mean, the reason is value, but we'll get to the Jets in a second. We're going to start with the Browns here at 41. Safety Grant Delpit 
out of LSU. Yes, they need offensive line bad. I still think it's a little bit early for most linemen. There are guys like Lucas Niang, Austin Jackson, Ben Barch, Prince Tagawanago, uh, et cetera, et cetera. A bunch of tackles who are going to, who are going to go in the beginning of that third round. So that's where your value is. I think it's too high for any of them. The only other tackle I think here in the rest of the second round entirely is Isaiah Wilson, who, as you can see, is going here at 45. So it wouldn't be awful value at 41. But if I'm a Browns, I would rather get Grant Delpit now and one of those tackles in the third because someone's going to be available rather than get Wilson here at 41 and then not be able to get a good safety in round three because there's a massive drop off at the safety position. You got Grant Delpit, who is good. Jeremy Chen is very good. Kyle Duggar, and then after that, it goes off a cliff. I'm not an Ashton Davis guy. Not a lot of talent elsewhere for round three, at least. So I think the Browns go with safety now, wait till the third, and get a tackle who won't be much worse than their options here at 41. 42, speaking of Jeremy Chin, he doesn't have to wait too much longer. He's going to go to the Jaguars. One of my favorite prospects in this year's class. He is a playmaker. Yeah, he played FCS competition, but he's nothing short of a playmaker makes turnovers and just big plays on in that defense. I think he has the size and athleticism and versatility to be an in-the-box safety, be like a linebacker role in a way. So I think he has a bunch of different roles in this league. I think this will be a good pick for Jacksonville. They've picked two, two high floor players in the first round. Why not go ahead and shoot your shot with a high ceiling player? Uh, pick 43, Bryce Hall, cornerback out of the University of Virginia to the Bears. Coming off an ankle injury, but he's definitely a first-round talent. And I think the Bears, this is a team who is in a weird spot, especially offensively. But defensively, they have a hole at cornerback as well. Why not go ahead and get a guy like Bryce Hall, who I think has the chance to be one of the better corners in this draft. I think he's easily a top-five ceiling at the position. So I think this is a good pick here for Chicago. Pick 44, it's your Gross Machos. Edge rusher out of Penn State to the Colts. I think Gross Machos is just a little bit overhyped in this pre-draft process. I don't think him going in the late first round is awful value, but I think here in the early part of the second round is probably more appropriate for him. The Colts could use some more guys coming off the edge. Jabal Shear, Justin Houston, they're starting to get older. A few decent young players off the edge, but nothing really spectacular. So I think uh, addressing that position here does make sense, and Gruce Matos could be a good pick. They need tight end, they need quarterback, uh, but I don't think there's any value with either of those positions here in round two. Pick 45, Isaiah Wilson, tackle, guard out of Georgia. He's versatile. He can play uh, numerous spots on the offensive line. As I said, could have gone with him at 41, but we're going to have him here at 45 instead because uh, I think it's less likely that one of those tackles goes to the Bucks in round three. And I think, whereas the Browns, they have a gaping hole at safety and tackle. The Bucks really need a tackle, but they don't have any other, like, giant holes. They have needs, but they don't have giant holes that have to be addressed right now. So I think this will be a pretty good pick for Tampa Bay. Protect Tom. Pick 46, Donovan Peoples-Jones, wide receiver out of Michigan to the Broncos. He's raw, but has a ton of upside. Really high ceiling. He was a very high recruit coming out of high school. Production wasn't always there, but once again, bad quarterback play. Shea Patterson is not good. Uh, he tested very well at the combine. Uh, he can jump like a kangaroo for crying out loud. Big bodied receiver, make plays in a red zone, vertical threat. I think this is a nice pick for the Broncos. Pick 47, I have the Falcons pick up J.K. Dobbins, running back out of Ohio State. The Falcons need another running back, and... Todd Gurley, isn't it? I like the move. He was only signed a one-year contract, but he he's shown as nothing to prove that he's going to be his same old self. Those knees clearly look worn out. He wasn't the same player last year, and I, I, I wouldn't take a shot on him being my every down back this season. So if I'm Atlanta, I'd like to get a running back pretty early, probably not in round one, but J.K. Dobbins here in round two, I think is pretty good value. He's the most complete running back in the draft. I think this would be a nice pick for them. At 48, Jets fans might not like this, but value over need. A.J. Terrell, cornerback from Clemson. They need O-line bad. We know that. Uh, but there are no tackles worthy of being picked here, in my opinion. They could look at guard. Nitain Muti, Robert Hunt, both options. But Terrell's the best value pick on the board. And they do need another cornerback. As I said, the separation between Jalen Johnson at 20, Trayvon Diggs, uh, A.J. Terrell and Bryce Hall was not a whole lot. So if Jalen Johnson's getting picked at 20, 
and AJ Charles on the board at 48. This is great value for the New York Jets. Here at 49, the Steelers have a few needs, and they only have one pick in the top 100, so I wanted to make the most of this. Could have gone with someone of a line of scrimmage, a pass rusher, interior, defensive lineman, offensive lineman. I think all of those would have worked, uh, but the value isn't great for most of those positions. Maybe edge rusher, but outside of that, not a ton of interior defensive linemen or offensive linemen worthy of this area. Robert Hunt is the next pick, but... You'll, you'll see why I have him going this high in a second. So why not add a dynamic playmaker in the backfield in Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, the running back out of LSU. He's a dude all back, good runner, good receiver. James Conner, I think, is a good uh, secondary back. He's a good player, but I don't think he's a guy who you want getting 25 touches a game. So Connor can be your power back. He gets 10 carries for 50 yards a game. If he does that, and that's his role, then that's great. And you have Clyde has the main back, and the Steelers going to have one of the better rushing attacks in the league. So pick 50, a little bit of a reach. Robert Hunt, the guard from Louisiana. So I've been preaching value over need, value over need. But the Bears really need a plug-and-play starter at guard, and there aren't many in this draft, so I think you have to get one now. And Robert Hunt, I think, is the safest bet. Nite Muti, I think, is the better player. But with his medical concerns, I think Robert Hunt is the safe pick here. So that's why I have the Bears getting him here at 50. 51, Cowboys going to get Terrell Lewis, edge rusher out of Bama. Uh, if it weren't for medical, he would probably be in the first round of this mock, and he'd probably be a first rounder in real life. Really like Terrell Lewis's skill set, but the medical is a concern. And in a pretty deep pass rusher class for day two, he will fall here to 51, where the Cowboys can get their Robert Quinn replacement. 52, Akeem Davis Gaver, linebacker out of Appalachian State. Big fan of his game. Rams need to improve the front seven. Corey Littleton is gone. All they really got there right now is Aaron Donald, who is a one-man wrecking crew. But Michael Brockers, Samson Ibukum, those guys are decent. Uh, but none of them are off-ball linebackers, and the Rams need one. So I think Akeem Davis Gaver is, is the best one on the board, and I think this is pretty good value. 53, really good value. One of the more interesting players in this draft for me, Damon Arnett, cornerback out of Ohio State. He's been very productive with the Buckeyes. He has had help, Sean Wade being in the slot, Jip Akuda being on the outside with him. But Damon Arnett in his own right is a very good player, and I think this would be a nice selection for the Eagles, a team who could use another corner. Pick 54, the Buffalo Bills. Going to go Julian Aquara, Ed Rusher out of Notre Dame. The talent is there. Production, not always great. Uh, but, you know, he does have upside. And I think if the Bills can develop him, he can be one of the better pass rushers in the game. Ravens at 55, LaVisca Chenault. Wide receiver out of Colorado. Interesting pick here. He has some medical question marks. Apparently, he's 100% healthy now after having a core muscle surgery a couple months ago after the combine. Uh, I still think he's a little bit raw. He's a great playmaker, very good with the ball in his hands, but I still think he's a little bit raw, and obviously the medical is a question mark, so that's why he falls here, and the Baltimore Ravens are going to take a shot on him. Pick 56, I have the Dolphins getting Kyle Duggar, safety out of Lenar Ryan. The competition he played against isn't great, but he's very athletic, playmaker in their secondary, and the Dolphins need a safety. Rashad Jones is gone. That opens up a hole there. And this is very solid value for Duggar. And he's really the last uh, safety with a day two grade for me. So after Duggar, there is a massive drop off at the safety position. So I think this is a very good pick here at 56 for the Miami Dolphins, who aren't probably going to be able to get a great safety until the fourth or fifth round. Maybe a guy like Kayvon Wallace, Terrell Burgess, or Ashton Davis. I made this pick in my last mock of predicting the pick. And I think the Rams should look to do it. Jonathan Taylor, running back out of Wisconsin. I know Rams fans don't like it. They believe in Daryl Henderson. I personally don't. I was not high on Daryl Henderson coming out of Memphis. I like him a lot as a change of pace back, and I think he does have a good role in the NFL, but not as a every down back. Jonathan Taylor, I think, is the highest ceiling of any running back in this draft. His mix of speed, power, and just traits that you want in a running back, he has them. But he also has some red flags. Fumbles the ball too much, and he might have touched the ball too much in college. Might have been too productive that his body might be a little bit worn out than some of these other backs. So Jonathan Taylor might have a shorter career in the NFL than a guy like DeAndre Swift or J.K. Dobbins, who didn't get the ball as much. Uh, but Jonathan Taylor has been great since he was a freshman. He's a great player, and if he can stay on the field and avoid the fumbles, I think there's a great chance he's the best back in this class. 
58, Troy Pride, cornerback out of Notre Dame to the Vikings. He's raw. Mike Zimmer likes to sit his rookie cornerbacks for a year, let them develop. So I think this makes sense. 59, Nitain Nuti, guard, Fresno State. Talent-wise, he's a borderline first-round guy for me, but he cannot stay healthy. He needs to stay on the field. If he if he could, he would be long gone. Uh, he's an absolute mauler. He got like somewhere between 40 and 45 bench rep, bench press reps at the combine. Uh, he he's a guy you don't want to mess with. Very physical blocker, but uh, the medical is just really concerning for me. Nick Harris, center out of Washington. He can also play guard, I think. And the Ravens could use some help on the interior offensive line. They have a few holes there. Marshall Yonda did retire, so I think Nick Harris could be solid. Titans going to continue to improve the middle of their defense here at pick 61 with Neville Gallimore out of Oklahoma. He's a freak athlete, a very good run stuffer, and I think this is pretty good value for him. I don't think he's quite as good as some of the other interior guys like Ross Blacklock, Marlon Davidson, but I think here at 61, this is good value for Gallimore. 62, T. Higgins, wide receiver, Clemson to the Packers. This is a really, really good pick for them. The Packers are having an awesome draft, which obviously makes me sad as a Packer hater, but, I mean, T. Higgins will be a great pick. I think the fit uh, it makes perfect sense. Get a big-bodied receiver, red zone, jump ball guy on the other side of Devontae Adams. I, I, I could see the Packers picking him at 30, and it would be a good pick. So here at 62, very solid value. Chiefs going to go Matt Hennessy, interior offensive lineman out of Temple. They have a few holes in the interior of their line. Laurent Duvernay-Tardif is good, but outside of that, they could use a new starter at center or guard. Matt Hennessy could slide in at center. And then 64, Michael Pittman, wide receiver, USC. Another big-bodied receiver. He tested uh, better athletically at the Combine than T. Higgins did during his Clemson Pro Day because Higgins didn't test at the Combine. Uh, I think Michael Pittman has a chance to be quite good, and if it weren't for his deep receiver class, he would be going a lot higher than this. Uh, so nice value here for Seattle. Get themselves another, another outside receiver on with DK Metcalf and having Tyler Lockett in the slot. That's one of the better receiving cores in the National Football League. And now on to the third and final round. Bengals going to get Willie Gay at 65. Freak athlete. Very good in coverage. There are some off the field question marks, but I think a lot of that is more so with the classroom rather than with the football players. So I think Willie Gay uh, won't have to worry about those off the field stuff because I think a lot of it was cheating on a test. He's not going to be taking any tests in the NFL as a professional football player. So I think this is a great pick for the Bengals. Redskins got to get your Trent Williams replacement. This is where I think uh, those third-round tackles for me start to go. The first one off the board is going to be Matt Peart out of UConn. He has incredible length, and I think he might have the lowest floor of these third-round guys, but also has one of the higher ceilings. Lions at 67. I love this pick. Chase Claypool, receiver out of Notre Dame. Big-bodied freak athlete. I mean, with his size and speed, he was put into conversations athletically uh, with Calvin Johnson. I'm not saying he's the next Calvin Johnson, because he's not. Uh, Chase Claypool is not Calvin Johnson, but a guy with his size, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 running a 4'4", 40-yard dash, who can jump, wide receiver, tight end, hybrid. I think Chase Claypool could be really, really good for his offense. 68, Josh Jones, tackle out of Houston. PFF loves him. I know a lot of people have a first-round grade on him. I don't. I don't think he's as good as people think. But here in the third round, I think he is worth a flyer, and the Jets need offense line pretty bad. Panthers at 69. Nice. Going to go Malik Harrison, linebacker out of Ohio State. Athletic, productive linebacker, good in college. Panthers need a Luke Keekley replacement. Here you go. 70, Lucas Nian, offensive tackle out of TCU to the Dolphins. He has some medical question marks. I think he had a foot injury a couple years ago, but other than that, Really, really good player, and I think this is a very solid pick for the Dolphins, who are really doing a good job of improving this offensive line. 71, Jalen Hurts, quarterback, Oklahoma to the Chargers. I think this is fair value for uh, the Chargers to pick a quarterback, finally, and you could look at Jake Fromm, you could look at Jacob Eason, but I think Jalen Hurts is more upside than both of them. We've seen this league change into more of a... Uh, Fitting for mobile quarterbacks, we've seen guys like Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes uh, become stars. So I think Jalen Hurts is better fit for today's game than both of them, and that's why I have him going before Easton or Fromm. And then Bradley and I, edge rusher out of Utah to the Cardinals, doesn't have insane length, but other than that, I think he's a really good player. And I think the Cardinals could use some more bodies going after the quarterback. So I think Bradley and Nye here, a productive player coming off a good senior bowl, would be a nice pick. Jacksonville at 73, going to go running back Cam Akers out of Florida State. 
Leonard Fournette isn't it. I think the Jaguars should look to trade him. If they can get anything for him, it's a win. Got to get him out of that locker room. I think he's a locker room cancer. So adding a guy like Cam Akers, who will make a massive impact early on, I think could be a nice pick. I think the only problem with this is is that when you're towards the end of your rebuild, I think that's probably a smarter time to go ahead and pick your running back. But I think Cam Akers has the chance to be really good. And if the Jaguars can draft well, then their rebuild will be over before we know it. And they can be a really good team. 74, Prince Tega want to go. Offensive tackle out of Auburn. He's raw, but he is upside. And I think if the Browns can develop him, he can be a really good player. 75, tight end finally off the board, Cole Komet. Most well-rounded tight end in the draft out of Notre Dame to the Colts. I thought about quarterback here. Thought about Easton. Thought about Fromm. But we are going to go with Komet. 76, a pick I really like. Devin Duvernay, wide receiver out of Texas to the Bucks. Got Mike Evans on one side. Got Chris Goggin on the other side. But Tom Brady loves his slot receivers. And Duvernay, great uh, short pass guy. Nice hand. Solid short route runner. I think he's a perfect fit for Tom Brady in this Buccaneer offense. Austin Jackson, tackle out of USC to the Broncos at 77. I think he's going to go a lot higher. I think he ends up going round one or maybe early round two. He's athletic. He has a lot of upside, but I think he's quite raw. And I think in comparison to some of his other tackles, this is not bad value at all for the Broncos. Falcons at 78, Devon Hamilton, interior defensive lineman at Ohio State. He's an athletic, productive player. I think this is a nice selection here for the Falcons. 79, I consider doubling down on offensive line for the Jets, but I really like Daryl Taylor. He's an athletic, speedy edge rusher coming off the edge. Has some medical question marks, but I thought the value here for Taylor was noticeably better than any of the offensive linemen, so I think this could be a good pick for the Jets. Pick 80, Raekwon Davis, interior defensive lineman out of Alabama, going to Vegas. Davis is a guy who's been productive for a while. His stock sort of slipped this season, but... He is a pretty good player. This would be a good draft pick. Pick 81, I have the Raiders going with Jonah Jackson, guard from Ohio State. Could have considered him to the Jets at 79, but he's going to go here at 81. Really had a good senior bowl. Pretty solid year this season for Ohio State, and I think this is a pretty good pick for Oakland. Cowboys get Adam Trotman, tight end from Dayton. He's a little bit raw and obviously not playing the highest of competition, but I do think he has the skills to be a pretty good tight end. Cowboys have Blake Jarwin, but I think they could use another guy with him. Jordan Brooks, linebacker, Texas Tech to the Broncos. He's very athletic, ran like a 4-3, 40-yard dash in the ballpark. And I think having a freak athlete like that who can do a multitude of different things on your defense can be quite useful for the Broncos. There are a lot of rumors suggesting he could go higher than we expect. Some people think he could slip into the late first round. Maybe a team like Baltimore, if Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray are gone. Looks like a guy like Jordan Brooks. Cam Dantzler, corner Mississippi State to the Rams. He's been very productive. Ran like a 4-6 at the Combine. Then ran a 4-3-9 in his pro day. I doubt that's accurate, but I think he is faster than a 4-6 to begin with. And I think the Rams could use another corner. Lions need plug-and-play guard pretty bad. We have Joe Dahl and Kenny Wiggins as our starters. We, sh we should have brought Glasgow back. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, so we're going to get Damian Lewis, the guard from LSU. He can start. Joe Dahl can start. And then Kenny Wiggins can be the backup. It's not great, but I, I guess it could be worse. Bills get Antonio Gibson, running back out of Memphis. Really like this pick for Buffalo. I thought about it for Detroit. I really did. But I know we need a, uh, we, we need a guard pretty bad. Uh, but this is a guy who can do so many different things. Devin Singledary is not a bell cow back. Neither is Antonio Gibson. Uh, but I think they can complement each other well. I think he can split their carries. Gibson's not only a running back. He can play wide receiver. Uh, he's a big guy. You can have him on special teams. He, he does so many different things. One of the more versatile and exciting players in this class. Pats get Jabari Zuniga, edge rusher from Florida. They need more pass rushing. And Zuniga is a guy who has a high ceiling, pretty athletic. Just had some health question marks. Just needs to stay on the field. And then Michael Ojemuda, cornerback out of Iowa, going to the New Orleans Saints. I think they could use some more depth at that position. And they're going to go with Ojemuda, a player who I do like. Here at pick 89, the Vikings going to go ahead and pick up Ben Barch, offensive tackle out of St. John's. He's another guy who's played low-level competition, but he's a really good player. And if he can be coached up well, I think he could be a quality starting tackle in the league. Vikings need offensive line. They have tried to address it. Garrett Bradbury looks like a good pick, but they still got some holes. 
Riley Reef ain't it. So I think Ben Barch could be uh, the guy who can develop and eventually be the left tackle of the future. John Grenard, edge rusher, Florida, going to the Houston Texans. They need more bodies going after the quarterback. Try to improve that front seven. Van Jefferson, wide receiver, Florida, to the Raiders. Really nice value. He's an outstanding route runner. Has some medical question marks. But he's a really good player when he's on the field. So the Raiders doubling down on receivers this draft, getting Henry Ruggs, getting Van Jefferson to pair with guys like Tyra Williams and Hunter Renfro. And that can that's turning in from one of the worst receiving cores in the league to one of the better ones quite quickly. Ravens get Kenny Willekes, edge rusher, Michigan State. I think he's going to have a role in this league for a while. He's not ever going to put up big numbers, but a guy who can be an interior defensive lineman, stop him to run, going after the quarterback. He's quite athletic. And I think this would be a good pick for Baltimore. Amik Robertson, cornerback, Louisiana Tech to the Titans. They need a guy in the nickel. Uh, Dory Jackson can play that role as well, but he is on, nearing the end of his contract. Logan Ryan is now gone. And I think this is good value here for Robertson. One of the better value picks in today's episode. Packers picking up Albert Okwanibano, tight end Mizzou. They had uh, Jay Sternberger picked in the third round last year, who looks solid. But I think they could use another tight end. Uh, having two is better than having one. We've seen a bunch of teams with two tight end sets perform so perform well. So I think a guy like Okwini Bonomo, who has a high ceiling, could make sense for Green Bay. 95, Tyler B. A dish. Often, interior offensive lineman out of Wisconsin. He's a guy who can plug in and make an early impact, in my opinion. You can have him in center or guard. I don't think he's a tremendously high ceiling, but I do think he has a nice floor. And this will be a good pick for the Broncos. 96, Troy Dye, linebacker, Oregon to the Chiefs. They lost Reggie Ragland. This is your new Reggie Ragland. Really tough, hard-nosed football player, but he's athletic. He's really good. I'm a Duck fan. Troy Dye is one of my favorite players on that team. And Chiefs fans, trust me, this is going to be a guy who's going to represent your defense, represent the toughness that you want. And he's not, he's never going to be a star, but he's going to be that guy who's the intimidator. So I think this will be a very solid selection here in the late third round for Kansas City. Browns at 97, going to double down here on tackles. They're going to go Sadiq Charles out of LSU. Coming off a really solid 2019, I think he's a pretty good player. And it doesn't hurt to take two shots on a position that you really need quite bad. Patriots at 98, I love this pick. Lynn Bowden, wide receiver, Kentucky. Makes so much sense. Bowden's a guy who's played quarterback, can play running back, can play receiver. He's the more athletic and, in my opinion, can be the better Version of Taysom Hill, and I think Bill Belichick would love to have a toy like Lynn Bowden to play with, so this is a phenomenal pick. 99, Isaiah Hodgins, wide receiver, Oregon State to the Giants. He has great hands, and I think he's a pretty polished player. I don't know why people are talking about him as like a fifth-round guy. I think he can make an early impact and could be a great value pick here for the Giants. He's probably going to be in the low 80s, high 70s on my board, so nice value. 100, Bryson Hopkins, tight end Purdue to New England. They don't have their Rob Gronkowski replacement. Maybe Hopkins can be that. A lot of people have him as their top tight end. I don't personally. Uh, I'm just, I'm on the fence for my tight end three between him and Okunibano, but he's still pretty good. Then 101, Jack Driscoll, offensive tackle, Auburn, one of the more polished tackles in this draft. He's another guy who I don't know why isn't being talked about as an earlier projected pick prospect, but I do like him, and Seattle needs guys who can make an impact early for their potential Super Bowl run these next few seasons as their window will be closing with Russell Wilson starting to get older. So this is a nice selection for the Seahawks. Final picks of the video, starting with Pittsburgh at 102. They're going to go Justin Matabuki, uh, interior defensive lineman out of Texas A&M. I'm not super huge on him. I think this is a guy that the Steelers will probably be looking at with their first pick. So how they're going to get him here if their second pick. He's a good pass rusher, and I like his upside, but I think he has a low floor and it for an interior defensive lineman here in round two and three this is a position where i'm not really looking for ceiling or ever i'm just looking for guys who can make an impact not to be superstars but to be quality starters he doesn't have the great motor and i think he has the talent and if he can be coached up in pittsburgh he'll, i think he has a chance to be pretty good 103 logan wilson linebacker wyoming the eagles never have good linebackers it's just a position that they don't care to draft high but I'm the GM. I make the calls. Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray both worked to 21. Could have looked at guys like Malik Harrison, uh, Willie Gay in the second round. Had Akeem Davis-Gaylor been on the board, could have looked at him. But I do finally have him going linebacker here with Wilson. 
Rams going to add another pass rusher, Alex Highsmith, edge out of Charlotte. I said they need more pass rushers. Highsmith is one of the more underrated players in this class. Vikings get Jordan Elliott, pretty good pass rusher uh, as an interior defensive lineman out in Missouri. Another pro football focused guy. I know they love him over there. And then the final pick of the video, an interesting one. Zach Moss, a player who's really grown on me, running back out of Utah. This I made this video two weeks ago. I think this pick would be Anthony McFarland, a player who I do really like, running back out of Maryland. A few running backs I like also could look at a guy like Darrington Evans out of App State, uh, A.J. Dillon, Boston College. But I think Zach Moss has the most upside of that group. I think he's the chance to be a potential bell cow back. And a team like Baltimore, I don't think they have their bell cow back in the future. They have a lot of good change of pace backs, and they have Mark Ingram, who's very good right now. But Ingram's not getting any younger. And then guys like Gus Hill, uh, not Gus Hill, Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. Good change of pace backs, but I don't think they're bell cows. So that'll end the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I know this video is going to probably get some hate, but just my opinion. Hopefully we can have some uh, civilized discussions in the comments. Have a good one. Peace.